and Merry, Merry Christmas. Let's get this mofo lit. In today's show, I'll be breaking down the latest Bitcoin technical analysis. And check this out. New record Bitcoin hash rate of 520 quintillion exahashes per second. And quoting Max Kaiser, the implied hash adjusted price for Bitcoin is now over $400,000 per coin. Let's go. Also in today's show, Bitcoin miners transactions revenue clocks 400% year over year surge thus far this year in 2023. Not too shabby as the miners continue to kill it. Also in today's show, Bitcoin fork discussions surface over the block space constraints, as well as the Bitcoin ordinals. I'll be breaking this down for you, as well as the latest with the SEC, setting their deadline for their spot Bitcoin ETF updates on December 29th, which is later this week. We'll also be discussing a spot Bitcoin ETF could completely destroy Bitcoin, according to the ex-Bitmax co-founder, Arthur Hayes. We're also going to be discussing billionaire Tim Draper revealing his latest Bitcoin price target for 2024. Spoiler alert, 250,000. And he says we're going to continue marching north, but we're not going to stop there. We're also going to be sharing Tim Draper's entire timeline of all his predictions from the inception back when he first purchased Bitcoin back in 2014, paid 19 million for almost 30,000 Bitcoin confiscated from Silk Road. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. All this, plus so much more in today's show. Merry Christmas, family. It is lit. Earl Harris, you're the man. Just sent a $20 super. Merry Christmas, brother JB. Merry Christmas, broham. Earl Harris, uh, appreciate your support, brother. And without further ado, if you're new to the channel, make sure to smash that subscribe button to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every single day, including weekends and holidays just like this. Also, be sure to smash the like button and hit the bell icon to turn on all notifications as it helps out tremendously with the YouTube algorithm, and I greatly appreciate your support. Now let's get this mofo podcast lit like that Christmas tree you see on your screen. So without further ado, let's kick it off with our market watch as we do each and every day. Checking it out here, you should be able to see Coin360 on your screen, and welcome everyone just joining the stream. Bitcoin's currently above 43,600. Ether is uh, just shy of 2,300. Solana continuing its pumpage on the cusp of hitting $120. Good Lord. Uh, We also have many of the alts actually pump in while some are correcting and in the red. And zooming out on the monthly, let's check this out to get a broader perspective of the overall market. We can see Bitcoin is still up 15.5% on the month. Ether, 9%. Solana, oh my God. 110%. 110%. XRP uh, is up 3%. AVAX, 127%. Cardano, 60%. BNB, almost 15%. Matic, over 19%. Just massive gainers overall. Even Polkadot is now up 70 Wow, 75% of the month, incredible. And checking out coinmarketcap.com, the crypto market cap continues to climb. We're currently at 1.68 trillion. The all-time high back we hit in November of 2021 was roughly 3 trillion to give you an idea where we need to recapture and which we will in 2024. And the 24-hour volume is just north of 81 billion with the Bitcoin dominance back on the decline at 50.7%. The Ether dominance, interestingly, also back on the decline as the other alts continue to pump. And checking out the uh, top 100 gainers of the past 24 hours, we got Ordi killing it again, leading the pack. Now with a, what is that, one and a half billion market cap. It is up 43% on the day, 50% of the week, trading above 75 bucks. We got Sats. Someone please tell me about this token because I know nothing about it. It kind of came out of nowhere. Now it's a top 50 coin with almost a $2 billion market cap. So if you have any insights, let me know. Uh, Because obviously Sat, Satoshi, you know, one Bitcoin could be divided into 100 million satoshi so i'm curious on this particular project i know nothing about it uh so it's up 29 percent of the day we also have axie infinity up 15 percent and near protocol up 13 percent now which altcoins are you most bullish on for this bull run please let me know in the comments right down below and checking out the crypto bubbles to get a visual perspective of the top gainers in the overall crypto market already leading the pack up 
almost 45%. Sats up over 31%. And Axie Infinity up over 15.7%. And zooming out on the monthly, major gainers. Virtually nothing in the red minus scam token FTT. And uh, another token called Cause. Virtually everything is killing it. Bonk up over 300% of the month. Ordi up over 250%. HNT 171%. BTT 163%. Stacks 135%. Solana 104%. AVAX 127%. Uh, wow, just crazy gainers. I mean, across the board, various uh, different alts up over 100%. And checking out the Crypto Greed and Fear Index, we're currently rated a 73 greed. Yesterday, 71. Last week, 65. And last month, a 73 in greed. So there you have it, my crypto fam. Let me know how you feel the market is likely to take us before the end of the year. Do you think the peak is in for the year with Bitcoin sitting? I think we tapped about a week ago or so, roughly it was 44,750, just shy of 45,000. Do you think the high is in or do you think we'll continue marching north? We got a lot to share. So let's uh, kick it off with our Bitcoin technical analysis. Check out some of the charts where the Bitcoin price action is likely to go next, as well as discuss the five things to watch out for in the Bitcoin market this week, because it's Monday, though it's Christmas. It's a holiday. It doesn't seem like it's Monday. It kind of seems like it's weekend, right? But anyways, here's what's going on for the week. The five things you should be on the lookout for in the Bitcoin market. Number one, Bitcoin price dices with the crux 43,000 level at Christmas. After days of sideways trading, the Bitcoin price finally offered fresh volatility into the weekly close. A dip to 42.7 on Bitstamp was the result. I guess that's the local low on the day. Before a modest recovery, a back above 43,600 at the time of this stream. And here you're looking at the Bitcoin one hour candle chart. This all played into the roadmap for a popular trader and analyst, Credible Crypto, who shared the following. Bids filled, all metrics look fantastic still. Send it. Now, he also, also said, absolutely prime for the next leg up. Hopefully, we get one more quick swipe into the 43,000s to fill a few more of my first bids. Bids filled, all metrics looking fantastic still. So send it. And we have Crypto Ed who shared the following. Santa started to offload his bags. A Bitcoin should be bullish. This is where it should bounce. If no strong bounce, then we go sub 40,000 in the coming days. Merry Xmas. Let me know which analyst you agree with. And Crypto Chase shares, here's the Bitcoin plan. Number one, third drive to start shorts and play a bounce. Number two, TP the bounce. Number three, chop ensues as the holiday approaches, but the market holds because of pending ETF approval. Number four, ETF approval pump, reopen shorts around here. Number five, liquidity, reality. Let me know if you agree or disagree there. Now for the second factor to watch out for this week, Bitcoin bounces back in classic style. That's right, if we look back this year, there is no doubt over how far Bitcoin has come. Since the yearly open, Bitcoin has gained in excess of 160%, with 60% gains alone in quarter four per data from statistics resource, Coin glass. That's pretty lit for a fourth quarter, especially in what's supposed to be a bearish year. So even this month has produced 15% gains thus far, Bitcoin's second best or I'm sorry, best December since 2020. And despite not repeating the breakout beyond the all-time high seen at the time, coming after its longest ever bear market, the renaissance has been music to the ears of the long-term hodlers. Shout out to all my long-term hodlers who are in profit right now. And uh, this behavior has endured despite the up-only nature of the year's price performance with upside tempered by only modest consolidations. And quick, uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, quoting, the week on chain from Glassnode. One of the standout features of the 2023 market has been the remarkably shallow depth of the price pullbacks and corrections. Historically, periods of bear market recovery and bull market uptrends for Bitcoin regularly see at least a negative 65% pullback from the local high, with many examples exceeding that 50%. However, the deepest correction in 2023 closed just negative 20% below the local high, suggesting that the buy side support and the overall supply and demand balance has been favorable all year. Let me know if you agree or disagree with that sentiment from Glassnode. And now let's discuss the next factor to keep your eyes out on this week. The macro markets wrap up a year of rate hikes. That's right. Quoting the Kabisi letter here, key events this week. Number one, the markets are closed. Merry Christmas, which is today. Number two, initial jobless claims on Thursday. Number three, pending home sales data also on Thursday, along with crude oil inventory, inventory data on Thursday. The markets are wrapping up a busy 2023 with a quiet week. Happy HODL days. Everyone, Merry Christmas to each and every one of you fam. Now for the next factor to keep your eyes out on this week, how good do Bitcoin miners really have it? When it comes to Bitcoin success stories this year, nothing arguably tops 
network fundamentals. Both the hash rate and difficulty have offered rags to riches transformations this year, and the trend shows no sign of stopping with the next halving just months away. In fact, check it. The new record Bitcoin hash rate is above 520 quintillion exahashes per second. Look at this chart, just straight north. It's kind of like just a straight vertical line. It's insanity, and it continues breaking out new all-time highs. Max uh, wrote this this morning. Implied hash-adjusted price for Bitcoin is now over $400,000 per coin. So he's ultimately suggesting, for those of you new here, that this hash rate that we're seeing right now uh, signifies that the Bitcoin price should be 400,000. And he looks at that as a lagging indicator to the Bitcoin price. So ultimately meaning Bitcoin needs to catch up. And when it does expect a $400,000 Bitcoin price action. I also wanted to share this analysis from Nunya Business. He said on the Bitcoin monthly, we just hit the 50% Fibonacci. New all-time high in the next four months. Let me know your thoughts as this is a great sign being above that 50% Fibonacci level. For those of you watching the Fibonacci on the charts, you already know. Now, quoting Jameson Lott, Revenue collected via transaction fees by Bitcoin miners averaged nearly $2 million per day this year. This is up 400% year over year. So the miners are absolutely ecstatic right now. And now let's uh, check out this tweet from Checkmate. My claim to fame is I bought the exact top of Bitcoin back in 2017. I guess that was close to 20 Gs. And my buy was so bad that the extra Coinbase fee applied to my Australian dollars at the time, put my bid above the top tick of the candle. My pain hardly compares of that of the miners. And he goes on to share, let's read this tweet out loud. Since 2017, mining difficulty is up 4,130%. Good Lord. And the hash price is down 99.97%. Bitcoin is now several orders of magnitude harder to obtain by miners than it is by investors. Even those poor souls who bought at the top just more bullishness, fam. Now, next thing to keep your eyes out on is greedy for the gains this Christmas. Despite the slower pace for Bitcoin price gains towards the end of the year, the average investor is increasingly guided by a sense of greed. This is the final conclusion by the Crypto Greed and Fear Index, the popular sentiment gauge which we share every day here on the channel. Looks set to round out 2023 at levels seen during Bitcoin's 69,000 all-time high just two years ago. That means today we're rated a 73 out of 100 on Christmas Day. The index, which uses a basket of factors to compute the average mindset across crypto investor bases, is firmly in the greed basket. So there you have it, my crypto fam. I also want to point out something from Max here as well. Check this picture out with Peter Schiff with that horse's arse right in his face. Anyways, uh, here's what Max wrote, and he actually tagged Peter Schiff. I think it's hilarious. Peter Schiff literally posing with a horse's what? I met up with him at his house in Westport, Connecticut years ago and pitched him Bitcoin under $250 after I had been trying to get him to buy some since 2011 at $1. Is he really going to sit by and watch his entire net worth go to zero against Bitcoin just because he is stubborn? Merry Xmas, Pedro. I don't know where the Pedro means, but nonetheless, this is quite interesting. Now, Peter Schiff actually lives in uh, Puerto Rico now. We're practically neighbors. But let me know your thoughts surrounding that. And do you think Peter Schiff will ever capitulate? Or is he just too stubborn and will never get it? Let me know your honest thoughts. Appreciate you guys. Merry Christmas, everyone just joining the live stream. We still got a lot to cover. We just broke down what's happening this week. Let's go on to our next story of the day and discuss the Bitcoin miners absolutely killing it uh, this year. The headline reads, Bitcoin miner transaction revenue new clocks 400% year-over-year year surge in uh, 2023. Here we go. The Bitcoin miners in 2023 have collected a daily average of $2 million in transaction fee revenue. According to data from Coinmetrics, the value reportedly showcases a 400% increase compared to last year's averages. And according to a December 23rd post made by Jameson Lopp, as I shared earlier, the revenue collected is roughly $2 million per day this year, up over 400% year-over-year. Year. And in the post, uh, loop reckon, I think it's lop, reckon the estimation uh, could mean the miners immediately convert Bitcoin to fiat currency. However, he said it was improbable that that was the case, as miners often embrace hodling onto their Bitcoin asset for potential 
long-term gains. This month, the miners total daily revenue block rewards and transaction fee revenues clocked the annual high of 64 million, almost a 400% increase from its year-to-date value per Y charts. And since the start of December, the daily mining activity revenue hasn't dropped below 33.85 million, signifying large profit intake for the miners in the fourth quarter of this year. And I think it was yesterday I shared breaking news. If you missed it, be sure to check out the pod because this news kind of went under the radar. Russia, they're one of their largest miners are actually setting up a Bitcoin mining hub in Ethiopia, Africa, that is going to be massive. So clearly there's a lot of money in mining and they see how profitable it's going to be, especially as the Bitcoin price continues to skyrocket after this halving coming up. Now, mining hash rate and difficulty soars, profitability, woes rise. In 2023, the Bitcoin network witnessed a massive surge in mining hash rate. And according to the coin metric state of the network quarter four 2023 mining report, the hash rate jumped to 250 exahashes per second at the start of the year. The rise in hash rate led to a 26% increase in Bitcoin Bitcoin mining difficulty over the past three months. And with the rise in Bitcoin mining hash rate and difficulty, profitability could take a slump. And the upcoming have an event may spell even more woes for miners overall, as the event is set to slash the rewards from the current six and a quarter Bitcoin to 3.125. However, on the other side of that Bitcoin, you got to keep in mind that the price is going to go up more than that 2x, that it's you know, decreasing in uh, minor rewards. Of course, easy 2x. I mean, we have the potential to 10x as I just demonstrated. However, experts believe Bitcoin's halving may subsequently decelerate the fast rising mining difficulty. Furthermore, the rising hash rate showcases improving network security, which may rapidly help Bitcoin price charge towards the bull market. So there you have it. And as I shared a little earlier, I mean, uh, charts don't lie. Check out this hash rate chart. New record Bitcoin hash rate, 520 quintillion exahashes per second, just straight vertical line like you have never seen. That's going to be the Bitcoin price here soon. I cannot wait. Send the God candle already, please. You know what I mean? It's time. And let's continue this pumpage. Let's get above 44,000 so we can do our pump watch. Be sure to smash the likes and let's continue with the news. We have a lot to cover. Let's discuss a potential Bitcoin fork. Then I'll be giving you the, uh, the ETF updates and an ETF warning from Arthur Hayes. And then we'll be discussing the latest prediction from billionaire capital venturous uh, Tim Draper, who got in early in Bitcoin back in 2014. And uh, I'll be sharing his latest prediction of 250,000 and his latest thoughts from his latest interview. But let's first discuss potential Bitcoin fork. Here we go. Uh, discussions about a potential Bitcoin fork are surfacing on social media X, sparked by the ongoing debates about the trend of ordinal inscriptions, the block space these inscriptions occupy, and the increase in transaction fees on the Bitcoin blockchain. As of December 23rd, two days ago, a backlog of almost 300,000 unconfirmed Bitcoin transactions exist. The current cost of transferring Bitcoin stands at 81 Satoshis per virtual byte, which is roughly $5 per transaction. That's not too bad compared to where we were like a week or two ago. It was like 30 bucks. Now, comparatively, the fees were much higher on December 16th, exactly, when the rate hit uh, 674 sats for virtual byte, which was $40 per transfer. Ouch. Uh, quoting Jimmy Song here, I hope the ordinals people fork off. They just might be delusional and prideful enough to think they're going to win. Every rally has some drama and resolution before it really takes off. Uh, shout out Jimmy Song. Moreover, uh, certain Bitcoin enthusiasts scorn ordinal inscriptions, labeling them as a spam attack or a scam and fundamentally a misuse of resources. December 23rd, advocate Adam Semeca asserted the ordinal inscriptions are a scam, causing division amongst Bitcoiners and predicted that this trend will result in a hard fork, which is a new version of Bitcoin that will eventually fail. Examples of that, Bitcoin Cash, uh, Satoshi Vision, and Bitcoin Gold. Now, the Twitter user, Pleditor, informed its almost 17,000 followers about the Taproot Wizard's alleged attempt to fork Bitcoin to become more like Ethereum. Pleditor's X post became a rebuttal to UD Worthmeyer's mention of the BIP 1559 on the same platform as he share here. I only see the anti-ordinals crowd talking about forks. And furthermore, uh, Worthmeyer's X post on December 20th proclaimed the following. In 2024, we're upgrading Bitcoin, to which David Cohen responded, please do fork Bitcoin. Keep the spam on your chain. Tyler Whittle, a sorcerer at Taproot Wizards, recently discussed the risk Bitcoin faces due to the reluctance to adapt 
and change. And while arguments that uh, the Bitcoin community is proficient at and understanding the risks of protocol changes potentially wiping out its market cap, it underestimates the dangers of not evolving. This resistance to change whittle compared to the downfall of formerly dominant companies like BlackBerry, Kodak, Nokia, which uh, failed to adopt new tech to make the market shifts. So Whittle added, in 2024, we must move away from the biblical Bitcoin culture. We need more 1960s space race vibes and less Bitcoin as religion. Well, I'll tell you this, that space race was also a religion because we ain't ever been space family. But anyways, I digress. Since the block size disputes and the 2017 split between Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash, much has evolved. Each chain has diverged with Bitcoin Cash expanding its block size to 32 megabytes and Bitcoin maintaining its one mega byte block size cap. Yet because of segregated witness and taproot, Bitcoin has attained a four megabyte block size this year. And over the past year, Bitcoin's average daily block size has also risen from 1.19 megabyte to 1.17. Nonetheless, there is no additional capacity for expansion. And the likelihood of proposing and agreeing on a block size increase is virtually non-existent. Now, as we near 2024, the Bitcoin community encounters a decisive juncture. Discussions about ordinal inscriptions, block size, and escalating fees highlights an increasing schism. The debates are heating up and the transaction queues are expanding. Talk of a potential fork is becoming more prevalent. And mid-December 2023 saw the term Bitcoin fork hit the peak of Google trend scores globally. Interesting, signaling the heightened interest and concern. So there you have it. My crypto fam, do you think we're likely to get yet another fork of the Bitcoin blockchain in 2024? And what are your thoughts on ordinals? Do you feel it spamming the blockchain as Max Kaiser describes it as barnacles on the arc, Bitcoin being that arc? Let me know your thoughts. Uh, or are you bullish on it? I know some people are like Arthur Hayes. He's all for Ordy and I know he's killing it with it. Let's continue. I still got a lot of content to share. Let's discuss some ETFs and what's going on over here. Here's the ETF updates, the latest with the SEC and what's going on. Here we go. Applicants for the Spot Bitcoin ETF have only a few days to finalize, finalize their filings to meet a looming deadline set by the US SEC. The SEC has set a deadline for Spot Bitcoin ETF apps to file their final S1 amendments before December 29th, which is, I believe, the end of the week. Reuters reported citing public memos and two people familiar with discussions. And according to the report, the SEC officials met on December 21st, four days ago, with representatives of at least seven firms hoping to launch spot Bitcoin ETFs in early 2024. Let's go. Some of the attendees at those meetings, including reps from BlackRock, Grayscale Investments, ARK Invest, and 21 shares. The meetings also reportedly featured representatives of the exchanges that would potentially list the new products, including NASDAQ and the CME, as well as lawyers and issuers. You gotta have lawyers. Now, regulators reportedly told attendees at the meeting that any issuer that doesn't meet the December 29th deadline will not be a part of the first wave of potential spot Bitcoin ETF approvals in early January. So who do you think will become a part of that first wave? Do you think all 13 potentially? Let me know. Now, Fox Business journalist Eleanor uh, Tourette was amongst the first to report on the deadline and subsequently confirmed the date for the final amendments to all the S1s by December 29th, which is by the end of the week. Quoting her here, the SEC told issuers that applications that are fully finished and filed by Friday will be considered in the first wave. And uh, she shared even here on X, confirming the date for the final amendments to all the S1s by Friday the 29th. The SEC has told issuers that applicants that are finally finished and what I just actually shared. Now, as previously reported, multiple spot Bitcoin ETF filers have been rushing to update their S1 filings with cash redemption model, which is all they're accepting, FYI, replacing in-kind redemptions, which imply non-monetary payments like Bitcoin, meaning it's cash in, cash out, no Bitcoin in, no Bitcoin out. And apart from the cash only requirement, the SEC also reportedly wants Bitcoin ETF filers to name the authorized participants in their filings. And according to the Bloomberg ETF analyst, Eric Belchunez, this uh, authorized participant agreement will be the last hurdle on the way to the spot. Bitcoin ETFs, quitting him here, this is no easy last step and may keep some from starting gate. The AP agreement plus the cash creates the approval. And he also noted as of December 22nd, none of the spot Bitcoin ETF filers have the AP agreement in place, while seven firms switched the redemption model strictly to cash, according to Balchunas, because that's likely all they're going to accept from that meeting they recently had with the SEC. You can see there's Grayscale, a recent meeting 
meeting on the 21st along with ARK and uh, iShares, which is uh, virtually uh, BlackRock. Then you got Bitwise, but also met on the 21st alongside Van Eck. And then on the 21st, also Wise Origin and Valkyrie and Franklin. And then on the 28th of last month, there was some others such as Invesco. And these are just all the ones with the apps currently awaiting the approval from the SEC. So despite multiple firms moving forward with their last minute updates for their spot Bitcoin ETF filers, Bloomberg analysts are still confident that the SEC has appro- will have approved the first spot Bitcoin ETF by January 10th. Now let's discuss that, crypto fam. How do you feel the market will react to the approval of all of these ETFs on January 10th? That's like two weeks away. Yeah, I mean, it's coming. And now we're above 43.7. Keep the pumpage a coming. 44, bring it. Now let's break down our next story of the day. We discuss some ETF updates. Well, now you got an ETF warning. According to Arthur Hayes, uh, these ETF spots could destroy Bitcoin as we know it. And yes, happy Kwanzaa, happy Hanukkah, and Merry Christmas. So here we go. Spot Bitcoin ETFs could completely destroy Bitcoin if they are too successful, warns the former CEO of BitMEX. Hayes, who co-founded BitMEX in 2014, explained in a December 23rd blog post, the Bitcoin has value because it moves. Uh, Quoting him here, expression is my last article of 2024. I offer some thoughts on expressions of the crypto investment theme that will ultimately prove to be worthless. May the pump be with you and also with you, young Padawans. Now, however, spot Bitcoin ETFs are made to vacuum up assets and store them in a metaphorical vault. Uh, Appreciate Earl Harris for gifting a membership to the channel. It looks like Paul P, you've just been blessed with a MicroStrategy membership of the channel. So thank you, Earl, for giving. We appreciate it. If Bitcoin ETF issuers end up hodling all the Bitcoin and investors end up buying Bitcoin derivatives rather than hodling themselves, the number of transactions on the network will dry up and miners will lose any incentive to keep validating transactions. The end result is miners turn off their machines as they can no longer pay for the energy required to run them, said Hayes. And without the miners, the network dies and Bitcoin vanishes. Fundamentally, if ETFs managed by trade fi asset managers are too successful, they will completely destroy Bitcoin. He also shared, or another person shared, new Arthur Hayes article drop, ETFs can kill Bitcoin. The price of Bitcoin is unlikely to keep increasing enough to sustain miners alone. This has always been the case, but the remedy was the transaction fees would provide miners the revenue. Now, interestingly, Hayes imagined that should such a scenario unfold, the new crypto monetary network would take Bitcoin's place and even expand upon Satoshi's original vision of peer-to-peer electronic money. Quoting him here, it is beautiful when you think about it. If Bitcoin becomes just another state-controlled financial asset, it dies because it isn't Use. The people will once again have a non-state controlled monetary asset and financial system. So hopefully the second time around we'll not learn to hand out our private keys to Wall Street firms. We're warning you now, do not depart with your Bitcoin. You may never get them back in your possession. There is a supply shock. You have the largest asset managers in the world all seeking to get it and get their hands on it. You have sovereign wealth funds, you have nation states, and that's just the cusp. Now, Hayes' Bitcoin musings come just two weeks before the anticipated approval of the Bitcoin ETF, which Bloomberg analysts predict between January 5th and January 10th. Again, roughly only two weeks out. So there you have it, my crypto fam. But anyways, fam, uh, let's dive into our feature story of the day. Here's our feature story of the day. Tim Draper, the billionaire venture capitalist, is predicting $250,000 per Bitcoin right around the corner in 2024. Here's his latest predictions. The headline reads, billionaire Tim Draper reveals Bitcoin forecast and says mass consolidation of crypto tech is coming to Bitcoin. He was just recently interviewed. So I'm going to be sharing this recent interview update that he had with Coin Bureau, the highlights. And I'm also going to be sharing with you a timeline of all of his predictions since his inception of getting started started in Bitcoin in 2014. I lay it out for you on X, so check it out. Billionaire Tim Draper is updating his outlook on Bitcoin, saying that the mass consolidation is coming. In a new interview with Coin Bureau, the venture capitalist likens Bitcoin to Microsoft. Man, why do you got to compare Bitcoin to something that Bill Gates created or founded anything to do with Bill Gates. I just, you don't compare Bitcoin to just saying, but anyways, saying that it will serve as the main platform for developers within the industry to launch new tech, effectively consolidating crypto use cases. Furthermore, like how Microsoft created programs like Word and Excel, Draper says he envisions Bitcoin developers eventually creating versions of a more popular technology uh, released over the crypto protocols, quoting him here. What happened with 
<laughs> was it was a platform and they let people do all sorts of things. And then they chose the things that really mattered. So I'm seeing sort of the same thing happen with Bitcoin as a platform. Sure, a lot of the experimentation went on Ethereum and Solana and Tezos and whatever else, but now people are going, okay, so NFTs are a big deal. So we're going to create ordinals on Bitcoin. Oh, okay, so DeFi is a big deal. So we're going to have DeFi on Bitcoin. Okay, smart contracts are a big deal. So we're going to move smart contracts to Bitcoin. I think that's happening. And I think there is a little bit that's starting to happen, a consolidation around Bitcoin as a platform. Draper goes on to say that he believes that Bitcoin by market will hit the 250,000 price level sometime in 2024. Let me know if you agree or disagree with that sentiment. That's a hell of a prediction. I like it. He also notes that he believes that once Bitcoin hits that quarter million level, it'll continue to rise, though he did not specify where it will ultimately land. It's going up forever, Laura. Just saying. And uh, to watch this interview he recently did with Coin Bureau, check the show notes below the video in the description. Now for the timeline I put together, I put in some work to make this timeline for you guys. In mid-2014, Tim Draper paid almost $19 million for 29,656 biddies, aka bitcoins, confiscated from Silk Road via the U.S. Marshals Service auction. At the time, the price of bitcoin was only $632 per coin. So Draper has already made an absolute killing. And in September of 2014, in an interview with Fox, Draper claimed Bitcoin would hit $10,000 in three years. That was his first official Bitcoin price prediction, quoting him word for word. I guess the markets aren't seeing what I am seeing. An entire economy is being rebuilt. I have a price target of 10000 in three years. Even that may be pessimistic. And again, he made this prediction back when Bitcoin was roughly $632. So Draper predicted correct as three years later, Bitcoin hit almost 20,000 during the 2017 bull run, which was virtually double his initial 10,000 prediction. And next, April of 2018, when Bitcoin was trading at 8,000, the well-known billionaire investor forecasted the price of Bitcoin would reach a quarter million by the year 2022. This was his very first quarter million price prediction. He launched that prediction at his Draper blockchain party in California, quitting him here. I'm thinking 250,000 a Bitcoin by 2022. Believe it. They are going to think you are crazy, but believe it. It is happening and it's going to be awesome. He repeated his bold prediction in a tweet the following morning. Serious winds of change at our blockchain party last night, predicting Bitcoin at 25,000 by 2022. And he clearly meant 250,000, forgot to add the zero. So he clarified in the afternoon in the tweet that he meant to say 250,000 as the correct figure, quoting him here. Oops, I predicted 250,000 in 2022. My tweet last night was missing the zero. 250,000 is the number. And to put that number into perspective, the price of Bitcoin would have had to increase in price 30x from when it was 8,000 at the time he made the prediction to reach the projected number. So over the years, the legendary investor had reiterated his 250,000 prediction multiple times since, ignoring the major bear markets and the fallout from the collapse of major crypto exchanges and the investment firms. And in June of 2021, Draper doubled down on his 250,000 price prediction sharing. I think I'm going to be right on this one. He said that on CNBC. I'm either going to be really right or really wrong. I am pretty sure that it's going in the right direction. That's because Draper believes Bitcoin is going to be much more in use by then, quoting him again, give it about a year and a half and retailers will be on open node, which is a Bitcoin payment processor, kind of similar to Strike. So everybody will accept Bitcoin. And then beyond that, I think Bitcoin continues up and there are only 21 million of them. So by virtue of its code, only 21 million Bitcoin can be mined. So far, uh, more than 18 million Bitcoin are already in circulation. And in June of 2022, Draper then doubled down again on that price. In interviews, he kept going on to say, but lo and behold, he missed the mark on 2022. But I think he has the target right, but missed the year. He says one thing that will possibly likely happen, and I don't know exactly when, is that the women will start using Bitcoin, which will send us to those multiple six-figure price levels. The venture capitalist noted that previously only one in 14 hodlers were women. Now it's something like one in six. And I'm curious how many of you are women here? And if you hodl Bitcoin, let us know. And uh, so, yeah, he, uh, quoting him again, uh, women control about 80% of retail spending and retailers haven't yet realized they can save 2%. Then they usually run on very thin margins. So that might be like doubling their profits. They can save 2% just by accepting Bitcoin instead of 
of taking bank-issued credit cards. And that can change everything. Then all of a sudden, all the women will have Bitcoin wallets and they will be buying things with Bitcoin and you're going to see the Bitcoin price that'll just go right straight through my 250,000 estimate. Then in March, you know, he shared another prediction, guessing 250,000. Clearly, we didn't hit 250,000. So now he's saying in 2024, he's expecting a $250,000 Bitcoin price action. Let me know if you agree or disagree with the billionaire venture capitalists. 